Good lord, YouTube. What's up? It has been a hot minute. How y'all doing out there? My name's Mike, and uh, this is my basement. My basement lair, and this is my channel, Solid State Alchemy. And today, you know, I'm making my kind of comeback video or return video. It's just going to be a talking head. Most of my videos are. It's just going to be me, you know, mostly free... <laughs> freewheeling and dealing about uh, the topic du jour and today's topic that I want to talk about is should you buy an RTX 3080 they're gonna go on sale tomorrow there's gonna be people with uh, you know 799 burning in their bank accounts trying to you know refresh the screen um, until they can purchase an RTX 3080 online I mean, I could, if I wanted to, drive down to Micro Center and camp out until they open up in the morning, but I'm not gonna, because I gotta go to work. But a bit, I've watched um, at least half a dozen um, of the, you know, the, some of the top uh, YouTube tech tubers uh, reviews of the 3080 with the performance uh, of it, you know, running it through the benchmarks, um, because, you know, they get review samples direct from NVIDIA. Um, and, you know, you see a trend, a pattern emerges quickly, um, going from video to video to video. And as I watched the first video, a thought occurred to me. As I watched the second video, that same thought was more solidified. So, you know, just to throw, you know, name drop out there, I was watching uh, Gamers Nexus, Tom's Hardware, Hardware Unboxed, Jay's Two Cents, kind of skipped Linus Tech Tips. I just watched Linus now for purely for the entertainment value. There's very little education going on there. So I watched both this morning. I watched the uh, Gamers Nexus performance review as well as the Ampere Architecture um, uh, break, uh, breakout for the 3080. And the thought that I kept having over and over again was if you don't have a 4K panel that's capable of 100 FPS or better, there's not really a compelling use case for this GPU. When you drop it down to 1440p, the, and I say that this GPU versus its immediate predecessor, the 2080 Ti, even the 2080 Super, really, um, when you drop down to 1440p or 1080p, uh, there's no reason to buy these GPUs. And maybe that's like saying water is wet, right? You know, typically most people do not pair high end top tier graphics cards with, um, with a lower end, less capable monitor, um, unless, you know, it's just some strange use case or whatever. But unless you have the best gaming monitor, right? I mean, a 4K, large 4K panel with high refresh rate or a ultra-wide QHD panel uh, with a very high refresh rate, which there aren't very many of those around. Um, I just, I can't see the price to performance differential for the 3080 if you've already got a rig that is um, geared toward 1080p high refresh rate, I think you'll be 144 hertz. Let's just call it that. 144 hertz, 1080p. There's no reason to buy a 3080. Uh, 144 hertz, 1440p. There's almost no reason to buy a 3080 over a 2080 Super, really, um, except in the most demanding titles. Uh, and, and or you want to use ray tracing. 4K, 100 hertz, 100 plus hertz, all day long like you if you have that monitor already then yes absolutely the 3080 is for you or if you are dedicated absolutely dedicated made the decision that you were going to get a 4k monitor uh, that does high refresh not a 60 hertz there's no point if you have a 4k 60 hertz monitor the 30 the 3080 there's almost no point um unless you want to play unless you want to play uh Microsoft Flight Simulator. That's your single use case is Flight Simulator at 4K. 
and you don't care about you know obviously no, nothing gets high refresh on that on that particular uh, bit of software right now um, or the only other use case is you know if you've got 4k and you know and you're high refresh 4k ready the 3080 is for you if you um, want ultra high if you've got a I, you know I'm not a monitor guy so I don't exactly know uh, what I'm talking about here but if you you know if there is such a thing as a 240 Hertz 1440p panel then I guess that makes sense the 3080 is going to be for you but really what it comes down to is this is a monitor melter if you do not have a top tier monitor you are wasting your money on a 3080 you are never going to see what it's capable of um, by by uh, pairing it with um, uh, a lower tier, uh, lower end monitor, maybe something that doesn't have um, Nvidia's uh, uh, what do they call that? Uh, FreeSync or, or G-Sync. You know, if you don't have some, if you don't have a very top end HDR um, FreeSync capable monitor at the highest re resolution or capable of the of the absolute highest uh, refresh rates the 3080 is just gonna be a waste now I'm extremely appreciative that the 3080 has brought down the price tier of the 2080 Ti and by default the 2080 um, as well uh, 2080 Super uh, or 2080, 2080 in the used market and you know retailers are trying to sell out the rest of their stock so they're heavily discounted right now if you have a 144 hertz um, 1080p monitor and maybe in the future you'd like to upgrade to 1440p or 4k it's a good time to pick up a 2080 ti for less than or a 2080 super for less than um, uh, the 3080s retail uh, price point is going to be but um, unless you fall into one of two categories the highest resolution with the with the highest refresh rates that are offered in that resolution or 1440p at super high refresh rates like 240 hertz there's almost no reason um, to get a 3080 and oh by the way if you're not sitting on a 10700k or a 10900k that's clocked at about 5 gigahertz or so you're probably gonna bottleneck whatever you pair it with um, if you're going for ultra high refresh, right? If you're going for 240 hertz or better, um, maxing out your monitor. When I say max out your monitor, that means you want your either you know your 1% lows, but even better, your 0.1% lows to be above the refresh rate of your monitor. That's what I mean when you max it out. Even the 3080 doesn't do that unless it's fed, right? And you got to shovel the coal, you know, um, at the locomotive, and the G and the CPU's got to do that. And right now. The only CPUs that are really a capable of absolutely pegging out the the end of that spectrum of the FPS spectrum um, consistently are the Intel uh, 10th Gen, um, either the 10700K or the 10900K. Maybe if you get a golden sample of a 10600K that does 5.2, and you tune and tune and tune and tune um, with the uh, the cache and the RAM. You could also, um, you know, kind of uncork a 3080 at those lower uh, resolutions at super high frequencies. But again, you know, the 3080 is for is is a achievable price point for a lot more people than the 2080 Ti was. But get, realizing the performance of that card. Is actually it's still at a price point that's well out of the reach of most people unless you are willing to spend the money for the surrounding pieces to kit out the rest of the system a 4k high refresh rate monitor and a CPU or if you're going for 1440p or 1080p you're gonna need an even higher refresh rate and you're at that point you're gonna need an absolute top-of-the-line Intel um, CPU if that is what you're aiming for if you're aiming for 
you know, 1440p, 240 hertz maxed out. If you're aiming for 1080p, I think the fastest monitor out there is 360 hertz, and you're trying to max that out. I don't know if the 3080 can consistently max out uh, a 360 hertz monitor. I don't think it will, um, but there may be some games. I think CSGO will get pretty close to 360 uh, frames per second at the 0.1% lows. But again, you're going to need the fastest gaming CPUs on the planet, and that is the Intel um, Core series, either the i7-10700K or the i9-10100K, and that you're going to need to get a good sample that overclocks to 5.1, 5.2 gigahertz. Um, 10600K may do it in a pinch uh, if you are a very good tuner and you have a very good cooling solution. Um, so yeah, if that's your checklist, right? Do I have a system that supports um, ultra high refresh gaming? And if I and do I have a monitor that supports it? Do I and if I'm going for 4K, do I have a monitor that supports 4K at 100 hertz basically that's about what you're going to get um, typically um, on your average frame rates uh, at 4k um, with the 3080 um, now at 4k the CPU becomes less of a bind I imagine you could probably get um, uh, similar performance with like a 3900 X um, or even a uh, a, a really good overclock on a 3700X at 4K, you may not b bottleneck um, the 3080 as much. That required, you know, nobody's uh, dived down that deep to see where the bottleneck is at 4K on a 10900K or a 3080. But we know that the, bo that the CPU bottleneck at 1080p and 1440p in some instances, and especially if you drop some of the, um, the eye candy settings down, uh, is going to be the CPU, and right now the only CPUs that, or the CPUs that offer the highest level of you know uh, of performance, uh, are the Intel Core series when it comes to ultra high refresh rate. So that that's it in a nutshell. If you don't have the ecosystem to support a 3080, either the ultra high refresh rate monitor and the and the ultra high performance CPU. Or the ultra high um, a 4K panel with it still it needs to be 4K 100 hertz if you want to get everything you can out of a 3080 um, and a, and a decently capable uh, CPU you probably get away with an i7 8700K or 9700K or 9900K at 4K easily um, or a 3700XT or a 3700X um, yeah then you're good right you could you could possibly make uh, the 3080 work for everybody else there's no point and I, and, and I say that you know not to disparage the card it's an amazing piece of technical achievement it really is um, the horsepower behind that thing is astounding um, the fact that it can 4k game in RTX let's talk about RTX so if if you're enraptured by RTX and you just think that it's like the best things in sliced bread and you want to be able to play every RTX game that comes along at whatever the resolution of your you know monitor is then yes the 3080 is for you because it's the first um, reasonably priced GPU that offers fairly consistent playable frame rate with full RTX on on most on most of the games that support it right um, so that's the three use cases right Three use cases: ultra high refresh rate, the ultra high def quality max settings, still with an accompaningly high refresh rate, and uh, RTX, RTX love, gotta have it. Can't ever play without it again after you play Control with all the RTX, you know, switches to on, the, to eleven. So that's that's my take. Thirty eighty awesome card. Do you need it? Probably not. Um, go buy, go research monitors. That's my, if you want to buy a 3080, my first bit of advice to you is look at your monitor specs and go research some monitors and see how much those cost. Because I, I priced out, you know, the top end or, or the most commonly highly reviewed 
4K panels today, and they range from the value option of about $339 to $399, all the, you know, sky's the limit. $2,000, $2,800 for a 4K, 50-inch, uh, 49-inch panel, it's supposed to be a gaming monitor. Um, but, you know, even your standard size 27, 32 inch 4K panels are $1,000 easily. Easily. Easily $1,000. Um, and I, I didn't, and I'm not a super high refresh guy. I do like, uh, you know, high def, high definition. Um, uh, but I imagine those 360 hertz uh, monitors that Linus had a video about. I didn't even watch that video, but I know it's out there. Um, I can't imagine those are, those are cheap. I know 240 hertz monitors aren't cheap at least ones that look decent so yeah that's my thoughts uh 3080 awesome do you need it probably not and on that bombshell